Good evening. It's Tuesday, June 22, 2021 here in Cebu City. I'm Cherry Ann Lim and this is Sunstar Tonight. Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia has set aside the executive order she issued yesterday which reminds those who do not implement the provincial law on arriving international passengers that they will face charges. However, the governor clarified that the province will still implement the swab test upon arrival policy. This comes after some government agencies said that they would now follow the IATF policy. Tarek Coronel reports. Indifference to the president. I am announcing right now that the executive order that I issued, EO23, yesterday, reminding all heads of government agencies that the provincial ordinance was in effect and reminding all of the possible criminal and administrative charges that may be filed upon violation of such ordinance. This executive order, I am now setting aside in deference to the president, even as we look forward to the scheduled meeting on the 28th of June with Secretary Duque and the same technical experts who had advised the president last night. Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia has announced she has set aside the Executive Order No. 23. EO No. 23 reminds the general public and concerned government agencies to implement Cebu Province's swab upon arrival policy or else face criminal and administrative charges. However, the governor said the province will still follow the swap upon arrival policy for OFWs and returning Filipinos. Garcia issued EO No. 23 on Monday, which was directed at the Department of Health, Bureau of Quarantine, Department of Tourism, Philippine National Police, Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority, and other concerned agencies. This after DOH officials met with and directed the regional directors of the government agencies in Cebu to implement the IATF arrival protocols. President Rodrigo Duterte on Monday evening warned the judiciary that he will not obey any order to stop the implementation of IATF arrival protocols in Cebu. Duterte also said he will leave the fate of Garcia to the Department of the Interior and Local Government. Meanwhile, DOH Central Visaya said, being a national agency, it will follow the IATF testing protocols for the arriving OFWs and returning Filipinos. DOH Central Visaya's Director Jaime Bernardo Nada said they will conduct the required testing on the seventh day of the quarantine period, but they also leave it to the discretion of the Cebu province to conduct the swab upon arrival. With this, Bernada said the province will now shoulder the swab upon arrival for OFWs and ROFs. Following the announcement of the DOH, the Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority said it will implement the IATF policy. MCIA General Manager Glenn Napoli said they are bound to adhere to the guidelines set by the DOH. Dr. Terence Anthony Bermejo, Bureau of Quarantine Chief, said the IATF arrival protocols will be followed for arriving OFWs and ROFs. Though the swab upon arrival policy of the province remains in addition to the required swab test on the seventh day, the Hotel, Resort, Restaurant Association of Cebu said it will also adopt the guidelines that will be followed by the BOQ. However, the Cebu Police Provincial Office said it will follow Garcia's swab upon arrival policy. Presidential Assistant for the Visayas Secretary Michael Dino in a statement said he requested the DOH Central Visayas to continue still at no cost to the arriving international passengers the test upon arrival protocol that Cebu has been practicing. 
He also requested Garcia to provisionally implement the IATF requirement of facility-based quarantine for 10 days, at least until a mutually agreed yet still effective set of policies and protocols may be reached in the upcoming dialogue. The governor is set to meet with Health Secretary Francisco Duque III and the medical and technical advisors of IATF on June 28 during the regular session of the provincial board at the capital. Garcia hoped that they will reach a win-win solution on their protocols being implemented in Cebu. Chari Coronel, Sunstar Tonight. Following the confusing policy statements on the use of face shields, President Rodrigo Duterte has decided to retain the mandatory wearing of face shields. Can I start as report? President Rodrigo Duterte has decided that the use of face shields aside from face masks, as among the minimum health standards, will retain due to the threat posed by Delta COVID-19 variant from India. Delta variant has been found to be at least 60% more transmissible than the Alpha variant which was first detected in the United Kingdom. Duterte said the government cannot afford a second wave of COVID-19 infections. He added he realized that he and the senators may have erred in discussing the policy in public. The confusion over the face shield policy started when Department of Health Undersecretary Leopoldo Vega said that the face shield may be removed if an individual is just walking on the streets or if it hinders from a person in undertaking a task. DOH issued a clarification saying Vega was just enumerating the different settings that requires a face shield. During Monday's talk to the nation, Duterte has apologized to the nation for the confusing policy statements on the use of face shields as protection against COVID-19. Kenneth Torres, since start tonight. The Commission on Elections in Mandawe City has started conducting a three-day special voter registration for male residents in line with the celebration of Father's Day. Chari Coronel reports. In celebration of Father's Day, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC in Mandawi City has conducted a three-day special registration for male voters in the city from June 21 until tomorrow, June 23. COMELEC Elections Assistant Sarah Riyunan said they recorded a low turnout of male registrants in the city. Comelec also distributes sanitizer to the first 20 male registrants on each day. Since there are only 100 days before the closing of the registration, Comelec has encouraged residents in the city to register and make their vote count in the coming elections. Comelec Mandawi office is located at the left side of Mandawi City Cultural and Sports Complex, which is open from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The city will also have a satellite registration at Barangay Kasili this coming Saturday, June 26. Ray Yuyan said this is their first satellite registration conducted since the pandemic started. Chari Coronel, Sunstar Tonight. Department of Social Welfare and Development in Central Visayas has launched an online mental health support program. This is to help address the mental health and psychosocial needs of individuals during this time of pandemic. Kenneth Torres reports. The Department of Social Welfare and Development Central Visayas has launched the We Support Project that will provide mental health care services to individuals using technology-based platforms, especially during the pandemic. In a statement, DSWD Central Visayas said that the newly launched program aims to provide help for repatriated OFWs, employees affected by the flexible work arrangement or temporary closures, family heads in need of support and other individuals and families in distress. Individuals can send a request for a free consultation through various the region's email address, website, mobile app, or through a text message. 
These wireless and online tools are attended by We Support service providers every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. except on holidays. Those who need further mental health and psychosocial assistance will be referred to the agency's network of services provided by the Department of Health, Department of Labor and Employment, Overseas Workers Welfare Administration, Philippine Red Cross, Philippine Mental Health Association Cebu Cluster, and United Registered Social Workers Visayas Cluster. Central Visayas is one of the pilot regions implementing the We Support project aside from the National Capital Region and Caraga. Kenneth Torres, Sunstar tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Cherry Ann Lim. Thanks for watching Sunstar tonight. See you again tomorrow. Good night.